We all make mistakes, and it is better to make them before we begin. A new idea must not be judged by its immediate results. Antisocial behavior is a trait of intelligence in a world full of conformists. The beauty and the scent of roses can be used as a medicine and the sun rays as a food. I don't care that they stole my idea. I care that they don't have any of their own. Be alone, that is the secret of invention, be alone, that is when ideas are born. I could only achieve success in my life through self-discipline, and I applied it until my wish and my will became one. Our senses enable us to perceive only a minute portion of the outside world. The idea came like a flash of lightning and in an instant the truth was revealed. The desire that guides me in all I do is the desire to harness the forces of nature to the service of mankind. Our entire biological system, the brain, and the earth itself, work on the same frequencies. The gift of mental power comes from God, divine being, and if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we become in tune with this great power. My mother had taught me to seek all truth in the Bible. It's not the love you make, it's the love you give. Perhaps I failed, but I did my best, these masters of mine may do the rest. Each day we go to our work in the hope of discovering. The opinion of the world does not affect me. I have placed as the real values in my life what follows when I am dead. Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other of the common fuels. Is nature a giant cat? If so, who strokes its back? My mother understood human nature better and never chided. She knew that a man cannot be saved from his own foolishness or vice by someone else's efforts or protests, but only by the use of his own will. Nature may reach the same result in many ways. Though free to think and act, we are held together, like the stars in the firmament, with ties inseparable. These ties cannot be seen but we can feel them. The Buddhist expresses it in one way, the Christian in another, but both say the same, we are all one. The entire earth will be converted into a huge brain. Great moments are born great opportunity. The last 29 days of the month are the toughest. The mind is sharper and keener in seclusion and uninterrupted solitude. Originality thrives in seclusion free of outside influences beating upon us to cripple the creative mind. Be alone that is the secret of invention, be alone, that is when ideas are born. I do not rush into actual work. When I get a new idea, I start at once building it up in my imagination and make improvements and operate the device in my mind. When I have gone so far as to embody everything in my invention, every possible improvement I can think of, and when I see no fault anywhere, I put into concrete form the final product of my brain. All that was great in the past was ridiculed, condemned, combated, suppressed, only to emerge all the more powerfully, all the more triumphantly from the struggle. There is no energy in matter other than that received from the environment. Everyone should consider his body as a priceless gift from one whom he loves above all a marvelous work of art, of indescribable beauty, and mystery beyond human conception, and so delicate that a word, a breath, a look, nay, a thought may injure it. Invention is the most important product of man's creative brain. 
The ultimate purpose is the complete mastery of mind over the material world, the harnessing of human nature to human needs. Let the future tell the truth and evaluate each one according to his work and accomplishments. The present is theirs, the future, for which I really worked, is mine. Misunderstandings are always caused by the inability of appreciating one another's point of view. The best way is to dispel ignorance of the doings of others by a systematic spread of general knowledge. With this object in view, it is most important to aid exchange of thought and intercourse. Our virtues and our failings are inseparable, like force and matter. When they separate, man is no more. There is no subject more captivating, more worthy of study, than nature. To understand this great mechanism, to discover the forces which are active, and the laws which govern them, is the highest aim of the intellect of man. This work somehow awakened my dormant powers of will and I began to practice self-control. At first my resolutions faded like snow in April, but in a little while I conquered my weakness and felt a pleasure I never knew before, that of doing as I willed. That is the trouble with many inventors, they lack patience. They lack the willingness to work a thing out slowly and clearly and sharply in their mind, so that they can actually feel it work. They want to try their first idea right off, and the result is they use up lots of money and lots of good material, only to find eventually that they are working in the wrong direction. We all make mistakes, and it is better to make them before we begin. All peoples everywhere should have free energy sources. The progressive development of man is vitally dependent on invention. The present is theirs, the future, for which I really worked, is mine. Money does not represent such a value as men have placed upon it. All my money has been invested into experiments with which I have made new discoveries enabling mankind to have a little easier life. Most persons are so absorbed in the contemplation of the outside world that they are wholly oblivious to what is passing on within themselves. The premature death of millions is primarily traceable to this cause. Even among those who exercise care, it is a common mistake to avoid imaginary, and ignore the real dangers. And what is true of an individual also applies, more or less, to a people as a whole. I do not rush into constructive work. When I get an idea, I start right away to build it up in my mind. I change the structure, I make improvements, I experiment, I run the device in my mind. It is absolutely the same to me whether I operate my turbine in thought or test it actually in my shop. It makes no difference, the results are the same. In this way, you see, I can rapidly develop and perfect an invention, without touching anything. I have been feeding pigeons, thousands of them for years. But there was one, a beautiful bird, pure white with light grey tips on its wings, that one was different. It was a female. I had only to wish and call her and she would come flying to me. I loved that pigeon as a man loves a woman, and she loved me. As long as I had her, there was a purpose to my life. We crave for new sensations but soon become indifferent to them. The wonders of yesterday are today common occurrences. A single ray of light from a distant star falling upon the eye of a tyrant in bygone times may have altered the course of his life, may have changed the destiny of nations, may have transformed the surface of the globe. So intricate, so inconceivably complex are the processes in nature. The progressive development of man, has as its, ultimate purpose the complete mastery of mind over the material world. My mother had taught me to seek all truth in the Bible. Man, like the universe, is a machine. 
Nothing enters our minds or determines our actions which is not directly or indirectly a response to stimuli beating upon our sense organs from without. With ideas it is like with dizzy heights you climb, at first, they cause you discomfort and you are anxious to get down, distrustful of your own powers, but soon the remoteness of the turmoil of life and the inspiring influence of the altitude calm your blood, your step gets firm and sure, and you begin to look, for dizzier heights. When natural inclination develops into a passionate desire, one advances towards his goal in seven league boots. I have always been ahead of my time. In a time not distant, it will be possible to flash any image formed in thought on a screen and render it visible at any place desired. The perfection of this means of reading thought will create a revolution for the better in all our social relations. From childhood I was compelled to concentrate attention upon myself. This caused me much suffering, but to my present view, it was a blessing in disguise for it has taught me to appreciate the inestimable value of introspection in the preservation of life, as well as a means of achievement. I would not give my rotating field discovery for a thousand inventions, however valuable. A thousand years hence, the telephone and the motion picture camera may be obsolete, but the principle of the rotating magnetic field will remain a vital, living thing for all time to come. We build but to tear down. Most of our work and resources squandered. Our onward march is marked by devastation. Everywhere there is an appalling loss of time, effort, and life. A cheerless view, but true. So astounding are the facts in this connection, that it would seem as though the Creator, Himself had electrically designed this planet. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.